next week's show is that we have for Russell Dream so far. Grand Slam Dynamite has MGF versus Samoa Joe for the AEW title. John Moxley versus Ray Phoenix for the international title. Soraya versus Tony Storm for the women's title. Chris Jericho versus Sammy Guevara for no titles. But Claudio Castagnoli versus Eddie Kingston for two titles. And here's the bit where Claudio responds to Eddie's promo where he says, let me guess, Eddie was screaming and cursing. Well, you were half right, Claudio. You're half right. For 10 years, I have listened to you complain and drag me through the mud. Let's put an end to it. I'm sick of it. Your dreams, your title aspirations, I'll burn it all to ashes. Then we have a card for Grand Slam Rampage. Darby Allen and Sting versus Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. Acclaimed versus the Dark Order for the AEW Trios titles. Followed by the Mogul Embassy versus Hangman and Bucks for the Ring of Honor Trios titles. That's a lot of Trios titles right there. Dueling Trios titles showdown. Yeah. And then Collision. Here's everything. Jay White versus Andrade. RVD returns in his home state. Yes. And FTR versus, seriously, the Work Horsemen. Yeah. That's all that's announced. The Work Horsemen. One of these cards is not like the other. Shivani interviews FTR. Speaking of Take 22, I, I don't know if this is live or what, but Cash... Oh, and, and this, by the way, had a, the, the, the clapper. Was, they actually had a clapper this time, but it was on screen. And uh, that's the next promo. That's the next one. Anyway, Cash stumbles all over those words. This could have used another take. Dax vows they will retain the titles against uh, whoever they're facing next. I've already forgotten. Sure, Dax was thrilled with that one. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do a clacker here. Yeah. And uh, either way, they will fight Aussie Open at Wrestle Dream. So that matches on. You know what's funny is the the story. I need to get this confirmed, but like the story is that the first fuck up was legitimate, and then this one was done as like a spoof. Uh, making fun of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucking telling me they did 22 fucking takes of that Keith Lee promo. You've got to be kidding me. Not only that. You have to be kidding me. But in the second shot, they did have a clapper board. So why wasn't there one in the first one shot? That's a goddamn great question. In 22 takes, they couldn't find one? So the card for Russell Dream so far, we have three matches announced. FTR versus Aussie Open, no matter what happens to the titles between now and then. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Page. And, of course, Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. And we get a Zack promo from japan i can't think of a better way to honor enoki san than to find out who the greatest technical wrestler in the world really is in 2023 i end your career so here's a starks promo this is the one where the clapping board is in the shot starks is angry they played a promo package for the guy he just beat and the guy who doesn't work for doesn't work for them he doesn't even have a match at wrestle dream he's beyond exhausted he wants to be danielson's nightmare challenges into a texas death match vows to put an end to this whole fiasco that is known as brian danielson and then a subtle but great line by Nigel McGuinness who notes, Ricky Starks has four or five homes, but one of them is in Texas. That was great. Main event, Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander. Well, here we go again. What in the fuck is going on with Britt Baker? All she does is get beat and beat and beat and beat and beat and beat and beat. And beat. And booked like a mid-carder. And here she is, main eventing a show. And granted, they were, at, they were at Penn State, you know. But man, she came out and she got a huge pop. The place is going crazy for her. There aren't a lot of people that are beaten as much as Britt Baker and are still over. And usually people like that who are beaten repeatedly and are still over actually get pushed. But she just keeps getting fucking beaten. And then... They go on to have a great match. The fans were going crazy for the last probably three, four minutes of this match. They actually got an overrun. But, you know, it kind of started a little bit slow and Britt selling her back because I think, you know, they're playing into the fact that she actually has a bad back. But they go to commercial, they come back, and you think there's only five minutes left, but they gave them, you know, an overrun. So we got another eight minutes after that. But they start doing all these near falls, and they did a spot there at the end where uh, Britt goes for the Destroyer, and she gets cut off. She still goes for a cradle. Statlander kicks out of that. And then Britt cradles her, grabs her head, hits a, a Canadian Destroyer, hooks her for an angel's wings, and then comes off the rope and gives her the stomp, which is her finish, one of her finishes. She covers her. The crowd's going, one, 
two! Statlander kicks out. This fucking place is furious. They're doing bullshit chants. Britt goes for another destroyer. Statlander cuts her off. Britt turns into an octopus hole. The place is going fucking crazy. She gets a thing out. She's going to put it in the mouth. Everyone's screaming. She finally gets a lockjaw on. The place is going crazy. And then Statlander cradles her and pins her. Huh. Can we do something with Britt Baker already? What the fuck is going on? Can we do something with Chris Statlander? Well, she's at least the champion. She turn, she's wasn't... at least winning all her matches. All right. But, Jesus. But, yeah. What in the fuck is Britt's win-loss this year? Has she won anything? The setup for this was she got beat. Yeah. She got fucking beat on Wednesday. And then people were like, oh, well, she accepted an open challenge on... That's all fine and good. If she was going to accept an open challenge on Friday, why the fuck did she get beaten on Wednesday? You should have beat somebody else. Uh, she had some wins in July and August. She beat Kayla Sparks. Oh, that's right. She had that brief win streak. She beat Taya Valkyrie. Which went absolutely nowhere. She beat the bunny. Except back to her doing jobs again. And then she's just been tag team ma matches and kind of splitting the results since then. And the four-way, of course. And, uh, yeah. And, and but but my point about Statlander is she came back and she got a huge ovation. And she beat Jade, which was, of course, huge news. And uh, since then, treading water. Not very exciting. She's treading water. She's having good wrestling matches. Listen, you're not wrong at all, okay? Yeah, uh -huh. But do you realize that when they did that Britt Baker match with Thunder Rosa, that bloodbath match? Yeah. When that thing was over, like, Britt Baker was seen by these fans as not the biggest women star in the company, but she was legitimately one of the biggest stars, men or women, in the entire company. That was not that many years ago. And I don't know what has happened over the last year, but she's booked like she's just another woman on the roster. And you know what? They need female stars. Because it's a, like Chris Stadlander. Yeah, she's got the TBS size. Everything you've said. She goes out there... And every now and then she'll get a short promo, and then she'll do a match, and she'll win. And then now we've got, like, Julia Hart's looking at her, so she's going to do a promo on Julia Hart. She's going to wrestle her. She's going to win. Like, she's not seen as, like, one of the big stars of AEW. She's Chris Statlander with the TBS title. Who do they have that is seen as a major star? Like, not just a star for the women, but what woman do they have that's, like, a star? Well, they had, Jade, they had Jade, who they never beat. Now she's going to WWE. Who do they have? I guess they have Soraya, but you know, Tony is the closest thing. Yeah, Tony, but Tony's just now got over. I mean, and, and this was her, like in the last month, and on her own, on her own, exactly. <laughs> she had nothing so to do with it. Who do they have? They don't have anything. But my point is, Britt winning this championship, getting this huge ovation in her hometown would have been such a big moment. Obviously, it would have been good for her. But it would have been a big moment for Chris, too. A memorable championship loss. And then the, if you want to put the belt on her, you can do a rematch at Wrestle Dream. I'll have more heat anyway. As it is, they had a fun match. They broke a lot of people's hearts. They're not doing anything with Britt. They're not building a challenger for Chris. It's all quite pointless. And this guy goes, well, you know, Soraya, or not Soraya, um, Mercedes. Everyone's saying Mercedes. Well, you know, they, they're probably going to get Mercedes. They're probably banking on Mercedes. Okay. Well, you bring in Mercedes for who? I don't know. Like, the whole point of bringing in a Mercedes is, okay, well, we have a roster of really strong women. They're all portrayed as stars. Now here comes Mercedes. Well, she's got a dream match with this person. She's got a dream match with this person. She's got a dream match with this person. Well... If everyone in the women's division is largely just treated as every other woman in the, the women's division, then who cares if you bring in Mercedes? What, she's just going to come in and have matches and just beat everybody? Like, you should be making women stars. And, like, the biggest women star that they had, they have now made into another woman on the roster who is constantly doing jobs. Why are we doing this? I don't get it. She should still be one of the biggest stars on the roster. I don't know, man. Whatever. Well, in a vacuum, it was a fun show to watch. It was a great main event. It was a great opener. It was a great opener, yeah. And, some, and fun stuff all up and down. 
But yes, there's confusion going on, and I can't call it a great show. So Ricky Starks comes out for a promo. God, this was the weirdest segment I have seen in I don't even know how long. Ricky Starks, last week, cheated to win the Owen Hart Cup. So this man comes out, and he is cheered. He talked about how much money he had, his expensive shoes, his expensive bag. Mm -hmm. He's rich, you see. So to review, if you cut a promo saying that you have expensive things like, oh, I don't know, a Tesla or a watch, and you only eat the finest steaks in the finest steakhouses, people might not like you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.